Good day, I am Michelle Bunyao and welcome to my vlog. For today's video, I am going to discuss about one of the famous literary works here in our country. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, the piece that I'm going to share with you today is entitled Scent of Apples. It is written by Bienvenido N. Santos. So for today's video, we, I will be talking or talking about its author, the summary of the story, the approaches that we will be using for this um, literary piece, so formalist approach, the cultural and the bi biographical approach, and for the last part is the conclusion. So the author of this short story is Bienvenido N. Santos. And he was a Filipino-American author. He, uh, he was also a poet and a diplomat. And he was born on March 22, 1911 in Tondo, Manila. And he passed away on January 7, 1996 in Mandaluyong City. So Santos grew up in a working class family and was encouraged by his parents to pursue his education. So during the war years, he studied at the University of Illinois, Columbia, and Harvard and served with the Philippine government in exile in Washington, D.C. And Santos began his writing career during his time in the United States. So he became a well-known figure in the Filipino literary community, particularly for his short stories and essays and his works often explore the themes of identity, cultural displacement, and the Filipino immigrant experience. So just like the story that we will be discussing today. And one of his famous works is the short story collection titled Scent of Apples. So it's published in 1979. And Bienvenido Santos received several awards awards rather for his contributions to literature. So it includes the Palangka Memorial Awards for Literature and the Philippine National Book Award. All right, so let's now move to the summary of the short story, Scent of Apples. So the author, Mr. Santos, was asked to speak before an audience in Kalamazoo, Michigan, one October when the war was still on. On the same night, he met another Filipino, Celestino Fabia, a farmer. So Mr. Santos was surprised to see a man who traveled really long just to hear him talk. In the course of the discussion, the man asked, in sporadically incorrect English, how the Filipino women of today were different from the stereotype he was familiar with. Mr. Santos replied that although they differ in the exterior, both women of different eras, they're the heart and soul of a modest Filipina. So Mr. Fabio was pleased. After the lecture, Mr. Fabio told Mr. Santos about his farm and his family and invited him over to his house. And he repeatedly saying that his wife, Ruth, will be pleased to meet a first-class Filipino. So he also told him about his son, Roger, with pride. So Mr. Fabia picked Mr. Santos up, to the, uh, up the next day. And during the course of what seemed to be an endless journey to the distant farm, Mr. Santos became aware of Mr. Fabia's life in the Philippines. So he was a spoiled brat and the black sheep of the family. He lived in an old Visayan town where there are no apples, but there are coconut trees and roosters going early in the morning, and there was his family. They finally arrived in the farm, so the fragrance of apples diffusing all over the place. Mr. Santos noticed how Ruth's hospitality and kind-heartedness was almost Filipino, and how adorable Roger, Roger really was. So in their humble home, he also found a picture 
of an anonymous Filipina wearing a traditional costume. So it's another manifest- manifestation of how dire Mr. Fabio's nostalgia is. He bade farewell to the family and Mr. Fabio took him back to the hotel. And he offered to send news to his family when he got he got back to the Philippines. But Mr. Fabio refused, saying that they might have already forgotten him. And they shook each other's hand and said goodbye. So the feeling of loneliness and isolation are the common feelings of immigrant Filipinos. It comes with the fear of no longer belonging to a culture which itself seems at times to be wasting away and finds expression in the rhythm of arrangement provided by the selections in Scent of Apples. So let's now look uh, to the uh, story using the formalist approach. So for the characters, first is Mr. Santos, so the narrator. So he is the main character, the writer, and he symbolizes the city people. So he was very astounded by the simple life of the farmer, so Mr. Fabia, and how his family lived. He was also impressed by the ambience of, or the gentle breeze of the countryside, and most importantly, the scent of apples in which the title was based. And the next character is Celestino Fabia. So he is an immigrant from the Philippines. So he is also a Filipino farmer who invites Santos home home for a meal. He longs for home given the emotionally harsh and divisive family matters that compelled his departure. And next is Ruth, Celestino's wife, an American country girl. She is willing to work like a slave. Her appearance roughened by hard labor displaces the mother and sisters who would have influenced Celestino if he had remained in the Philippines. And last but not the least, Roger. So he is the son of Celestino and Ruth. Now let's talk about the setting of the story. So the story happened in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and it was on October. And the main setting was in Mr. Fabius' place, obviously. So it is the place wherein he invited Mr. Santos to come by and eat dinner. And now for the plot of the story, first is the exposition. So the story opened with the brief introduction of where the author was. And the author, Mr. Santos, was asked to speak before an audience. So he met Celestino Fabia, just a Filipino farmer, as he called himself. So the night Mr. Santos left his hotel. And for the rising actions of the story, in the course of Mr. Santos' discussion, Mr. Fabia asked how the Filipino women of the day were different from the stereotype he was familiar with. And after the lecture, Mr. Fabia told Mr. Santos about his farm and his family and, and invited him over the, to his house. So the plot of the story was not really presented or arranged in a chronological order because the author inserted some flashbacks and or to present some events that happened in the past okay and next is the climax so they finally arrived in the farm and the fragrance of apples diffusing all over the place for the following actions mr santos finally met the wife of mr fabia and his son roger so they invited Mr. Santos to their humble home and catered him with food. The author found the p- picture of an anonymous Filipina wearing a traditional costume, another manifestation of how dire Mr. Fabia nostalgia is. Ma- Mr. Fabia's nostalgia is. Excuse me. All right, for the last resolution, so he bade farewell to the family and Mr. Fabia took him back to the hotel. And he offered to send news to his family, but he refused because because he believed that they might have already forgotten him. So they shook each other's hands and said goodbye. So that is the plot of the story. Now for the long language that was used. So the language the author used in used here in writing his text or his short story is English. 
so the det the details are very understandable and it's very clear however there are some words that are hard, hard to understand particularly by an average person since the author used a lot of metaphor and colorful colorful words that gave more flavor to the text and for the point of view the story of scent apples or scent of apples rather by Bienvenido N. Santos is told in a first-person point of view, in a persona of a Filipino immigrant way back in the war period in America. So this is read an account of an unforgettable experience of the author with another Filipino immigrant named Celestino Fabian. Alright, so for the tone or mood of the story so the tone by the tone of the scent of apples by bienvenido and santos can be described as nostalgic contemplative and bittersweet so we know that throughout the story um there is a pervading sense of longing and yearning for home and cultural identity so the tone reflects the protagonist's emotional journey as he navigates the challenges of living in a foreign country and yearns for the familiarity and simplicity of his homeland, which is the Philippines. And the nostalgic tone is evident in Celestino's vivid recoll recollection of his past, particularly his memories of the Philippines and the scent of apples to trigger his longing. So overall, the nostalgic, contemplative, and bittersweet tone of Scent of, A Scent of Apples captures the protagonist's emo emotional journey. So it illuminates the themes of longing for home, cultural identity, and the immigrant experience. Alright, so let's now move on to the symbols. So in Scent of Apples, um, there are, or the author employs uh, various symbols to enhance the themes and meaning of the uh, story. So some of the symbols or notable symbols symbols include first is scent of apples. So the scent of apples serves as a recurring symbol throughout the story. So it represents Celestino's longing for his homeland and his desire to reconnect with his Filipino roots. So the fragrance of apples triggers vivid memories of the countryside and his childhood emphasizing the power of sensory experiences in evoking a sense of home and nostalgia. Next symbol is the apple tree. So the apple tree in Celestino's home symbolizes his connection to the Philippines and his longing for his native land. So it represents stability, rootedness, and a sense of belonging that he feels is missing in his current life in the United States. And the apple tree becomes a metaphor for his desire to return to his cultural heritage and find this true identity. Next symbol that can be found in the story is the Statue of Liberty. So the Statue of Liberty, which Celestino sees in, upon his arrival in the United States, symbolizes freedom so it, or opportunity in the American dream. However, for Celestino, it, was, it also represents the challenges and sacrifices he must make as an immigrant. So the statue stands as a power, powerful reminder of the cultural differences and the sense of displacement he experiences in his new surroundings. And the last or the fourth symbols, symbol rather, is the voices of Fili fellow Filipinos. So the voices of other Filipinos that Celestino encounters symbolize a connection to his homeland and a sense of community. So these voices with their shared language and experiences offer comfort and familiarity in unfamiliar in an unfamiliar environment. So they serve as a reminder of his cultural heritage and reinforce the themes of belonging and identity. So by employing these symbols, um, the author enriches the story by adding layers of meaning and emphasizing the themes of cultural identity, longing for home, and the immigrant experience. All right, so for the theme of the story, so the scent of apples refers to the story of first-generation Filipino immigrants 
who felt a sense of sadness and reminiscence to their original country. So they are still trying to retain some sort of connection to their past life of how things used to be on their former country though they have already started a new life in other world or in other side of the world which is the uh, it's which is in united states so or in other country so this piece focuses on the main theme of immigrant blues and how philippine americans felt left out of american culture and how they miss being part of the culture in the philippines all right so let's now move on to the imagery so santos employs vivid imagery to create sensory experiences for the readers so scent of apples um, utilizes several de- literary literary devices to enhance the storytelling and convey its themes and messages so these are the literary devices that uh, that can be found in the story so descriptions of scents, colors, and landscapes bring the story to life and they evoke a strong sense of place and atmosphere. So for example, the detailed description of the scent of apples, the countryside, and the bustling cityscape help readers to connect with the characters' experiences and emotions. And as discussed earlier, the story incorporates various symbols So for the symbolism, to represent abstract ideas and concepts. So the scent of apples, the apple tree, and the statue of liberty all serve as symbols that deepen the story's themes and add layers of meaning. And the author also uses flashback. So the use of flashback allows, or flashbacks, allow the story to move between past and present. So it provides insight into Celestino's memories and experiences in the Philippines. So these flashbacks help to develop the character and provide context for his longing for home and cultural identity. All right, so next is the irony. So irony is present in the story through the contrast between Celestino's expectations of the American dream and the realities he encounters. So despite his aspirations for a better life, he still faces challenges, discrimination, and a sense of displacement. So this irony underscores the complexities of the immigrant experience. So it was really seen in the story. And Santos also uses similes and metaphors to create vivid comparisons that enhance the imagery and the meaning in the story. So, for example, Celestino describes the scent of apples as the fragrance of all my remembered past and the Statue of Liberty as a mother with a torch, a beacon, and a welcoming arm stretched out. So, after or these literary devices work together to enhance the narrative, so it evokes emotions and they convey the themes and messages of the story. All right, so let's now move on to the cultural approach. So the cultural approach to analyze or in analyzing this story involves uh, examining the story through the lens of cultural identity. So the immigrant experience and the clash of cultures. So this approach focuses on how the story portrays and explores the cultural aspects of the characters' lives and the impact of cultural differences on their experiences and sense of self. So in the story, so uh, the protagonist Celestino Fabia um, grapples with his cultural identity as a Filipino living in the United States. So Santos explores the tensions and the challenges that arise from the clash between the Filipino culture that Celestino carries with him and the American culture that surrounds him. So, or through Celestino's encounters with other Filipino immigrants and his memory of his homeland, the story delves into the complexities of maintaining 
a cultural traditions while trying to adapt to a new environment. So furthermore, the story explores the theme of nostalgia, the longing for one's culture's roots and homeland. And Celestina's memories for year uh, for his yearning, oh sorry, the scent of apple serves as triggers for his yearning for the familiar sights, sounds, and smell of smells of his Filipino upbringing. And the story emphasizes the importance of his cultural heritage and the profound impact it has on shaping one's sense of identity and belonging. And for the biographical criticism or approach, so biogra biographical criticism is an approach to literary analysis that examines the relationship between an author's life and their work. So when applying biographical criticism, criticism rather to um, apple, sense of apples, we can consider the life of the author, which is Bienvenido and Santos himself and how his experience may have influenced the story. So we know that uh, he was a Filipino writer who lived from 1911 to, to 1996, and he spent a significant portion of his life in the United States. So just like in the story, where he worked as a writer, teacher, and cultural ambassador for the Philippines. So Santos himself experienced the immigrant journey and the challenges of adapting to a new culture. So by applying biographical criticism to Scent of Apples, we can gain a deeper understanding of the story's themes and the author's intent. So it allows us to consider how um, Santos personal experiences, identity, and cultural background may have influenced the, his portrayal of the immigrant experience and the exploration of Filipino identity in the story. So in Scent of Apples, the protagonist who shares the author's name reflects on his experiences as an immigrant in the United States. So this suggests that Santos himself drew inspiration from his own life and used his personal experiences to shape the story and the themes of identity, the cultural displacement and longing for whom that are prevalent prevalent in the story could be seen, seen as reflections of his own experiences as an immigrant. Alright, so for the conclusion, so this kind of story, we know that really happens in real life and it's really um, a life experience of the author and it's presented in a detailed but not in a chronological manner and it showcases the distinctive traits of the Filipinos and Santos also shows that even we are in a foreign land we still carry the manners that we, Fili we Filipinos have so through this story the experience um, of the Filipino immigrants have been revealed. So we all know that this kind of story really happens in real life. So a lot of people, Filipinos in particular, are really going through this. And we all know that Filipinos, we Filipinos are really hardworking in nature. We are really determined to um, make our lives better. And we really try to uh, get our families out of the periphery. But in the failure of finding a decent job with enough salary here in our country, some people or some Filipinos really try their luck in other places. And many of them are deciding to settle there because they believe that there are more opportunities outside the country. So in spite of this, there are still Filipino Filipinos who want to who still want to go back to their own country or to the Philippines because the blood still runs through their veins. The, the Filipino blood still runs through their veins, and they still long for the for our country, and they still want to return to the place where they can call home. Alright, so that's the end of my 
vlog. I hope you learned something. And thank you for listening. I hope to see you on my next vlog. Bye!